Let's talk tech and the Giants with Jenny Horn. All right, uh, we've got Google, which kind of had the most recent, like, uh, surprise in terms of the market's excitement around AI. You know, NVIDIA's just been kind of quiet, fell to the back a little bit. Microsoft early on with OpenAI, but it feels like Alphabet's really kind of catching up here to the narrative. Well, it's about time. I mean, I feel like every earnings call, we just see shares tank and then they have to recoup the losses. I mean, it's been like now conse consecutive earnings we've seen just not results that are able to excite the street. I don't exactly know if the news we got today is. I yeah. think that this is this is annoying, frankly, for us as consumers, but it's interesting. Oh. So for the first time in the company's near 25 year history, Alphabet is considering putting some of the new AI powered features behind a paywall and a major shift that means they'll be charging for the first time for their search engine. Of course, they charge for mm. other components of their business, like Google Drive, Gmail, for like right. updated storage. And usually so, for like professional Right, like the services. enterprise accounts. Yeah. Yes, not like as an, on an individual basis. But they did say they plan to, or according to Financial Times, they plan to unveil this new set of AI-driven products that would only be available to those that are paying a subscription if you just want the basic search feature, that will still be free. Huh. So that's very interesting. I mean, they do have a, I'd argue if anything is a monopoly, which I don't like to use that word, but they've 80% of the search market, which they've commanded since 2015. They have about $175 billion that, that is derived from overall like the ads they generate from that business. So not right now, I think that if you, if you alienate certain parts of the search, you could stand to lose some ad business. Yeah. This is an interesting one. The the intraday action was uh, maybe telling a bit because the shares kind of popped, then they came back down. Uh, and you would think that having a premier service that you can charge for would be a pretty clearly bullish thing. But if it's going to dissuade people from using your product, push them into free ones, or maybe if it's telling us that search is actually going to be really disrupted, by the chat GPT, the language model stuff, and they have to try and kind of save some of their cash flow by you know, putting up a paywall. And I don't know, there might be an interesting kind of read through here. That's exactly what I was thinking. I wonder if they think that they're going to see other, like like Microsoft, OpenAI, also putting paywalls behind their own their own entities, and then they're just sort of being pre preemptive at this point, which it then makes me, oh, that's I think why the whole thing made me upset. But I guess look at Netflix. Netflix basically now has all of this this massive revenue from people that were so mad at what they, they did with their password crackdown, but those were not paying users. So right. like right now, this service is free to us. I guess it's, it's a way for them to generate more money. I just think that, you cannot charge for AI yet as far as search and on Alphabet. We're not there yet. The yeah. product isn't good enough yet. Seems a little early, yeah. I uh, guess it depends on what you want to do with it. A lot of the like image generators, you already have to log in, you have to have an account, and you can only build a certain, like for Microsoft Bing's image generator, you can only make like 15 images a day. And then once you're through that, if you want premium, then you can do more. So there's a little bit of precedent for it to mm -hmm. some degree at this point. Uh, but if they're just going to put it all as a pay to use service, then it'd definitely be a big change in the, their history of kind of how they operate. Especially if I'd like to see what else they plan on offering in this premium subscription. Because to me right now, right. I, I've been on Alphabet, as yeah. you, on, on their Google, like their AI, their search function in terms of images. It's nowhere near being good enough to charge for yet. Mm, so, to, okay. so, so roll out some more products, then we'll see. All right, fair enough. Uh, I also wonder how they'll integrate it with their phone. As a uh, Pixel user, you know, their uh, voice and their AI stuff is super useful, but um, I imagine that it would be easy to kind of integrate a charge into a phone. Like if somebody were buying a phone, you know, you get a new Google phone and, all right, do you want the AI capabilities or not? If you do, it's an extra X amount a month. I mean, like people are almost always going to say yes to that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I pay $30 a month to Apple for various services. I don't even know what I'm paying for anymore, but yeah. that's, that is the good thing is then you have subscription models, so you have guaranteed revenue. And I think that that, that is a definitely a win. I can understand why the street is excited about this. I'm just worried that this is going to be a broader trend. And mm. as a consumer, I'm not happy right. about it. Right. They're just going to establish early on that you got to pay for it. All right, real quick, uh, analyst notes this morning. Uh, Meta, the other last two days, basically, was kind of the springiest of all the big tech. Quickest to go positive on down days. And still looking pretty strong on a year-to-day basis. We're still up over 40% this year, which is just not the same that we could say for most of the other MAG7, if you even call them that. But Jeffrey said that the strength in Meta's advertising revenue growth could actually surpass that of Amazon's ad business for the first time in nine years. They kept a buy rating. They raised their price target to 585. They said that overall, they see revenue guidance calling for even greater outperformance, and Meta could capture about 50% of the incremental industry ad dollars versus the 33% they captured 
record in 2023. So that's actually somewhat amazing to see the continuation of of Meta's dominance. I mean, we'll have to see though as far as earnings, which we do get, I believe, at the end of this month, what their ad business looks like. They're a great read on ads, but are they actually going to surpass Amazon? Because this is pretty optimistic as far as as I could see. All right. Meta stock looks pretty good. Chart looks pretty good. I mean, so does Alphabet, too. Uh, both these charts kind of make it look like the market is ready to rip at any moment. So it, does Amazon, too, actually. Amazon, too. So it's basically other than Apple and Tesla. All the charts that are important are still pretty solid. So, all right, uh, we'll see if we can get a little bullish action bounce back today. Thanks, Jane.